At LHTC Broadband, we're proud to provide the communication services you need to get the most from today's technology. We're your local choice for TV, phone, and internet. We offer high-quality cable TV service with HD, multi-room DVR, on-demand, and watch TV everywhere, plus unlimited calling. And our internet is faster than ever with speeds up to one gigabyte. With no contracts and local customer service, switching has never been easier. Call today, 724-593-2411, or visit LHTCBroadband.com. Hello and Happy New Year! Welcome to our January 2021 edition of Laurel Highlands Happenings. I'm your host, Louise Henry. I'm hoping you all had a lovely holiday and you're staying healthy and you enjoyed a restful and peaceful time at home. So did you get out and stretch your legs at the state park maybe? Or did you opt for Slopeside instead at one of our awesome ski resorts in the Laurel Highlands? I do hope you did squeeze in some fresh air fun over the holidays. If you are looking for some winter getaway ideas, vacation rentals, outdoor recreation or winter fun activities, please do visit our website golaurelhighlands.com or our Facebook page for some ideas. Now, our show today is focused on one of our newer Go Laura Highlands partners. We think they are awesome, inspirational, and mega creative. So I'd like to welcome Rachel Sager of Sager Mosaics and the Ruins Project to Laurel Highlands Happenings. Good morning, Rachel. Thanks for coming on as a guest. Good morning. So, um, so how have you been? You good? <laughs> I'm very good. I'm thrilled to be uh, be uh, talking to you, and uh, just I'm very excited to share everything um, about what it is I'm doing. Thank you. <laughs> oh, right. We know we are tickled pink um, that you've come on as a guest. Um, I think Sagan Mosaics and the Ruins Project is just amazing. But for the listeners who are wondering, what is Sagan? Mosaics. Can you just give us an overview uh, about what you are, you know, your story, where you're located, that kind of thing? I am a Fayette County mosaic artist. Um, I was born and bred here in Fayette County, very proudly. Um, my studio uh, sits right on the Great Allegheny Passage bike trail. You could throw a stone and hit it. <laughs> and also also right next to the Yakagani River. So I, I'm in, in a little bit of heaven. That's, that's how I see it. But but I've worked very hard to get here. I've been doing mosaics for about half of my life, which is about 25 years now. So I'm in um, mid-career as an artist, I guess you could say. Um, I came to it through the back door, definitely. I learned how to do mosaic uh, the wrong way for many years. Um, and then finally got a chance to go over to Europe to study with some of the masters. And that really changed everything for me. I learned um, a lot of the, the classical ways of making mosaic uh, and then I came home and brought that knowledge home to southwestern Pennsylvania and the geology that we have here and I, I had learned how to use the hammer and hardy so I could break up the all these beautiful stones that, you know southwestern Pennsylvania actually has amazing rocks for a mosaic artist sandstone limestone a wonderful black dense shale uh, so that's in a way that's how I, I built my reputation um, by being the forager mosaicist <laughs> kind of what I was known as for a, for a while. Um, and then uh, I came to, well, I, I think that might have been something. The, the next thing, I, I bought a coal mine by accident. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Well, I stop um, there. How would you mean you bought a coal mine that, by right? accident? <laughs> yeah, how does that happen? <laughs> You're right. Yeah, it, it, it's quite a story. It really is. Um, you know, I, I, I've been an artist for a long time, but um, my family, if you want to go back a little bit farther into my family history, we come from coal. My grandfather, my father, grandfather, and great grandfather all mined coal right in this area. So I have been steeped in um, in what lies beneath my feet. My father. Uh, in particular, uh, helped me even as a child, just soaking in through osmosis, understanding what the layers of earth beneath us and what they mean to, you know, 
what they certainly what they meant to him. Um, <clears throat> so the story of the coal miners and the blue collar people south of Pittsburgh has always been a really um, it, it's just been a very important part of of who I am as a person and the people who are from this area. Um, I, I've uh, and, and then I, I traveled around a lot. You know, I moved right. and, you know, I, I, I traveled. I, I lived in Pittsburgh for a long time. And, and it was um, it was disturbing to me in a way that these people and the places that I come from seem to have been misunderstood along the way somewhere. So their story has always been something that has, has, is my story, I guess you could say. So when I, when I found this little piece of property to come, you know, I left Pittsburgh, I came, I wanted to come home and get close to my roots, um, there was a little adorable little brick house that I have known since childhood and really loved, um, and it was under foreclosure. So that's where I get to that. I'm, I'm taking a long way around to explain how I bought a coal mine by accident, but um, when you buy a property that's in foreclosure, a lot of the time you, you are in, you're blindly making a decision. Uh, you're just taking a leap of faith as to what you're going to end up with. So what I ended up with was buying the ruins of Banning Number Two processing plant for the coal mine. So it's it's on the other side of my property, my little house. Uh, there are all these gorgeous. Uh, uh, I say gorgeous <laughs> because I'm speaking like an artist. But right. uh, these these concrete walls and rooms and brick buildings, and they've been sitting there, just sitting there uh, since 1946 when Pittsburgh Coal Company uh, left and closed the coal mine. Uh, and and so I. I, I own it. And, and it, it just was, it was the most shocking thing that, that, that had happened. Uh, when I was just looking for a place to live, um, I ended up with this giant cement canvas because that's what I've come to call it. A giant cement canvas right. for my, my kind of art. How, how big is the coal mine? I mean, can you kind of give us some uh, mm-hmm. kind of visual? I mean, yeah. Uh, well, some people uh, misunderstand that it's the actual coal mine. The coal mine itself is all closed up um, with earth, which is a very good thing. So yes. what, what we what the ruins is is the the operating station. Uh, I would say it's uh, probably up to two acres of land. Wow. That's the best way I can describe the space. Probably. Gosh, mm-hmm. that's big, and, that, that, and that's um, a lot of cement walls. Yeah, a lot, <laughs> a lot. Oh my and goodness, a lot of Rachel. So a lot of it is still has, hasn't even been touched yet. We we work in the areas that are very accessible and um, easy to get to right now, but there's definitely potential for more. So, so mm. this coal mine has become the ruins project. So I guess you 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 got this by accident, and then I guess it sparked an idea that this could be a canvas for mosaics. Mm-hmm. And, and you've kind of just mm-hmm. run with it. And I understand that you've you've had lots of different artists collaborate with you too. Yes, this. yes, mm-hmm. many. Um, I would say I, I, when I try to count them in my head, I have them logged in, but I don't have the number right now. But I would say it hovers around 100 right now of, of artists from uh, not just the States, but all over the world. Wow, a hundred artists mm-hmm. have got their kind of their mm-hmm. paw print on your yeah, coal mine canvas. That's a great way to describe it—a paw print. Yep. <laughs> I just love that. I love that, and mm-hmm. I'm sure they all come with their own different ideas because their own cultures and their kind of their own vision for um, what they want to display on your coal mine, right? Exactly. Well, yes, um, th- that's, that brings me to another um, point. It's actually a, a great way to, to say it, to describe it. They bring themselves to the ruins. But very early on, you know, I just, I, it was the winter of 2015 when I realized that I really had this. And, and I felt like I felt like God was throwing down the gauntlet, you know, and he said, Rachel, what do you, this is the challenge of your life. What are you going to do with this? And it was a lot of pressure. Um, I felt that um, it was scary. I, I felt like I was in in charge of this, you know, and it, and it had the power to really, really be something. So I I, I carefully created three rules in the that very first winter before we started any work. Right. And these three these three rules have played out. We're now we're five years in now. We're five years, um, you know, with work behind us, and they have really worked. They're rules that that preserve what the ruins is about, which a lot of it is about history. A lot of it is about the coal history. 
but it's very much also about artists coming and bringing that energy, that new progressive, exciting energy that all artists have. But I had to figure out a way to harness some kind of control um, and at the same time let artists be who they wanted to be. So um, my three rules are, if you'd like to hear them. Sure. <laughs> Number one is to honor what was. Uh, I try to keep them simple, uh, honor what was. So that means, that does not mean that an artist has to create a coal miner portrait necessarily or or work in coal, even though we do love to work in coal and red dog and shale, things that came from the mine. We like to use those as material. In a way, it just means not to dishonor the memory of what happened here. Um, there are a lot of people uh, who live here still that are children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren of the coal miners who worked in this exact mine and were very careful um, to respect that. <clears throat> okay. And and it works. It really does. Number two is to build relationships with raw material. And what does that mean for a mosaic artist? Um, mosaic artists are very, very wrapped up in material. Like, what do you use? What What is your medium? Do you use glass? Do you use stone, ceramic, you know, broken plates? There's so many different things a mosaic artist can use. So building relationships with them um, means that you don't go to Michael's or, or a craft store to get a kit that is already ready for you. You don't buy things that are ready-made. You literally go down to the river and and forage for stone and learn how to cut it with the hammer and hardy. You interact with your material. You think about where it came from. Did it come down? You know, did it come down the river from the next town, or or you you dig in into your own place? You know, maybe you come from California or. Ohio or wherever you're coming from, and you bring your geology here to the ruins. So in any either way, you're putting a lot of thought and love into your material. Um, number three is to walk the line, which is my way of uh, stealing Johnny Cash's famous uh, famous words. Mm -hmm. But um, what the line in in my um, way of thinking about mosaic is actually this beautiful um, Italian word called andamento, and it, it's the language of the classical mosaicists from the European continent. Uh, it's p the pathways that mosaic travels, and you know, if you if you haven't been, you know, to the cathedrals in Europe, you may not have seen that kind of mosaic. A lot of the American um, mosaic is more of a crazy paving, uh, just put this piece where it fits kind of a thing, but there's a very specific language involved in learning the classical mosaic, and um, I teach it. I could talk about it all day long. There's <laughs> lots of different, uh, you know, lots of, you know, you can, mosaicists mosaic can sit, sit down and, and talk on demento all day. They really can. So with those three rules, um, I have found that everyone is happy. I'm happy. The artists are, you know, they have a structure, but they also want to push themselves a little bit and become better artists while they're working at the ruins. Okay. Um, so, yeah. So your artists that come, do you invite them or, or can they volunteer to come over? How does it work? Well, um, both. It depends on what the art is that they're doing. There, we have some very ambitious projects, like we have right now a full-size uh, portrait of a coal miner, um, real-life full-size portrait um, being made in, by a Scottish art, artist in Scotland in her studio right now. Wow. And that was, that was an invitation from me. So an artist has to have a, a, a certain kind of working knowledge of the medium in order to take on something that big. Um, and so I end up building a relationship with that artist, of course. And then there are tiny little, tiny little um, projects like the gear project project, which is, um, I think we have 50 or so artists who have made very small little circles of mosaic that fit inside of old industrial gears that are um, installed onto the wall, and then we pop the little circle into the gear itself. 
<clears throat> and so that's a, more of a collaborative project. And then the tiny rings, which are even smaller, they're only two inches, um, little tiny rings that are two inches wide, and those are micro mosaics. So, um, and then an artist, you know, can do ten of those and and send them in the mail very easily. So there's just all kinds of different ways. And then we have, you know, the biggest piece of art here, which is Steve Sidvari's um, The Great Train, which is, uh, I call it the biggest mosaic train in the world. And until I get proven wrong, I'm just going to stick with that. <laughs> but it's, uh, it's 67 feet long and seven, almost seven feet high. It's an exact replica in mosaic of the Pittsburgh and Lake Erie um, locomotive and, and rail cars. So lots of different ways of approaching being, being a ruins artist. I, I have actually, you know, I've not been to the ruins project, but I have looked on your website and I follow you on Facebook. Um, and it's just um amazing all the creativity and the vibrant colors and all the different styles and types of mosaics you have it just blows me away and you do such a great job of posting on facebook and it's just i just love it the colors are just great um so so for those that are listening and think gosh could we come and visit what what's the i know you've offered tours in the past but with this pandemic going on where are we can can people in the future can they come and book a tour to see this wonderful project in progress? Absolutely. Yeah, I give tours year round. Okay. Um, Winter time is actually a wonderful time to get a tour because the leaves are, are off of the trees, so you can see more of the skeleton of, of the buildings. Um, and and for the times that we're living in right now, I think it's a perfect um, activity because it's outside, small groups of people. Um, you know, we follow all the all the um, CDC uh, guidelines when you come to the studio. You know, what you wear a mask and you just spend a few minutes inside to sign up and. You can actually uh, book your tour online. So in a way, you don't even have to come into a building at all if you if you don't need to, if you don't want to. Um, and it's very easy to stay six feet apart while you're getting a tour. Uh, so I've had lots of um, <clears throat> tour, uh, lots of people book tours for the express reason of doing something that is out of the ordinary, getting outside of you know all these restrictions that we're living under. It's a it's a nice thing to do. So yeah. how long is a is a tour? What's the length? Well, they keep getting longer. I'm having a problem with that. Uh, the more art that we have, the harder it is to stick to the hour. It's usually an hour. Um, right. But I'm going to probably have to start uh, creating specialized tours soon to split up things because I, I can't seem to fit it into an hour. Right. Uh, but we have a three-person minimum. Uh, so in order for me to take you over, it has to be three people or more. I can go up to about 15 people, 17 people if I have to. Uh, and it's $15 uh, per person. Person. Okay. So, now, is it, um, is it, um, uh, gosh, I'm thinking, about it. can you take uh, like strollers or wheelchair? Um, I mean, or is it? Unfortunately, yeah, unfortunately, it's not wheelchair accessible. Okay. Um, uh, it's, there's a, a slight hill to, um, to uh, climb up, not, not, a, not climb up, just to, just a little bit of uneven ground through the whole thing, really. Um, it, right. You know, I've had lot, lots of, lots of older people through with um you know with walkers and canes things like that and we have chairs uh scattered throughout for people who need to sit from from time to time so it's a very slow ambling walk um but but unfortunately not not wheelchair accessible yet okay no just thought i'd ask um so if Mm -hmm. um if people are listening and think gosh we would love to do this um can you just uh give us your website so they can they know where to go to click on and register Mm -hmm. for a a tour Sure, it's www.sagermosaics.com. So it's S A G E R Mosaics. And there is there are buttons all over the website that say book a tour. So it's right. really the easiest way to do it um, as opposed to calling me. Mm-hmm. Okay. So um, aside from the tour, you also offer online courses to learn how to do like mosaics and you've been doing this for quite a few years so you're ahead of the game with this whole online thing you 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 provide this these classes like i was looking online you've got quite an extensive choice of different courses i mean from beginners right through to advanced could you just share a little bit about that 
Yeah, well, I'm very proud to be um, a part of the Mosaic Arts Online um, Artist um, Library, I guess you could call it. They're building a library. Uh, they're based out of Santa Barbara, but it's an online, it doesn't matter where they are because, you know, I go to film there a, f- a couple times a year. And then once it's really amazing. They have the whole thing worked out. You buy a course and you have it forever and you can tap into it whenever you need. Um, but I, my first course that I taught was intuitive on Demento. So there's that word again on Demento that mm-hmm. I mentioned. And that's kind of the basic. That's the first, first one um, that I created. It's my most popular course. Um, and it, it, it takes apart the line in every way possible and then helps you build it back up again. So it's like the ABCs of Mosaic for my kind of teaching. Um, and then there's all kinds. There's one called the Earth as Your Shopping Cart, which teaches you how to, um, you know, travel the landscape and the topography of your world and find a beautiful tessera, a tessera is a piece of, is each piece of mosaic. So it's like a square. Um, um, so the earth is your shopping cart is one. Let's see what uh, the intuitive uh, composition. I teach comp- a composition. And then my latest, which I'm so excited about, and this is a mouthful. So are you ready for yep. this? This uh, <laughs> Intuitive, intuitive malmischiato. Uh, malmischiato, there's another Italian word. Uh, it It's, um, it means badly mixed. And even though that sounds like a negative term, it's about mixing hot glass together uh, into recipes to create the micro mosaic. So uh, this is all about the jewelry and the tiny little pieces and you use a torch and it's taken the mosaic world by storm um, this year and everybody is doing micro mosaic. It's just, it's totally addictive and it's like a rabbit hole that you jump in and don't want to come back out of. <laughs> I mean, I've seen you working so, in a studio and it's tiny, like little fragments. It, yes. It, I mean, yes. it's just amazing. I mean, I don't know if I'd have the patience or, I mean, it's just, <laughs> I just think it's really, really cool what you do. I just, I just love it. I think it's, I think Thank everyone should come you. and visit your, your uh, studio and, <laughs> um, and book a tour at the Ruins Project because I just think it's, it's so exceptionally cool. And I just love it that you're right in the Laurel Highlands. So it's, it's very exciting. But yeah, sorry, I was, I had to butt in and say that. But anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> so um just to recap your studio and your shop is right on the great allegheny passage the bike trail and it's at mile marker uh, 104 it's a great location yeah. i've been there it does overlook the river um it's so peaceful and quiet it's just a, it's just brilliant um so yes we're in with with it with it um which is a very small little village um and yes. it, and it's very much a part of with it the town is very much a part of the story of the ruins project because it was built as the company town by Pittsburgh Coal Company so it's a classic um it, it's actually on the national register of historic places as the town itself so yeah so if uh, people want to come and visit are you open at the moment uh to to visit the shop studio right now we're by appointment only right uh, um, the winter is, you know, is so slow for the bikes. Bike biking, the bikers are ninety percent of our our um, clients, so it just makes sense to hibernate in the winter. And I make all the I make all the art. I'm I'm in here like a little, um, you know, elf making making things for spring. I love it. Uh, for now, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, but if you call if you call um, the numbers on the website, you can call and um, you know arrange to come in whenever. Just because I live here, so my my, right. my house is right next to the studio so right right um but then during the season we are open um nine to five every day except monday and tuesday right now okay okay and i guess that's subject to uh covid too let's hope that we yes. get we kick that out the window uh this yep. year so <laughs> mm-hmm. um so apart from you making mosaics and working in the studio and doing the project and doing online courses you also blog and your blogs are great. I've just, you know, oh, I've read quite a few. That, you're, you. you're a great writer, and it gets me inspired. Oh. But yeah, you, you've got several blogs up on your website too, right? 
more than several, probably a few dozen. I would say you have to just go back into the archive to find the old ones. Yeah, um, but yeah, winter is also. Uh, I, I do I do write more and log more in the winter because I have more time. <clears throat> but um, yeah, I'm, I'm, writing is my certainly my other passion behind right behind mosaic. So. It really does uh, encourage me and inspires me. Um, you've got some lovely stories, um, so I, I really do enjoy those blog posts as well as the Facebook posts. All those wonderful mosaics. But um, do you have anything else to share? We've got about a couple minutes left. Yes, yes. Um, Okay. One of the things that's happening, um, partly because of COVID, um, you know, this past summer we had so much planned. We had so many artists that were going to come from Australia and Scotland. They were going to be boots on the ground working, and, you know, it all got canceled. But luckily, happily, uh, many of those projects are still happening. They're just happening through the mail. And so there are a lot of sub-projects within the, the greater umbrella of the Ruins Project, and one of those is called the Feather Project. And it is artists from all over the world, again, making native Pennsylvania birds and mosaic in very high realism and very high detail. Think like Audubon paintings, realism, like that kind of um, and like cutouts of mosaic. So it won't have a background. They'll just be sending these birds from everywhere uh, and they'll be popped right onto the wall. And we have these beautiful painted trees by um, by our, a good local artist friend who's painting these trees, you know, native trees also. And so there are going to be birds nested all through the ruins in these trees. And it's just, I mean, it, it's so exciting. Everyone, and it's like an ornithology lesson, you know, but it's art. <clears throat> so it's that sounds really, really delightful. I'm, I'm just, and, and are they life size? Birds. Yeah, they're yeah. all so a chickadee. A chickadee will be little, a, an inch and a half tall mm-hmm. or two inches tall, and um, the barn owl will be sixteen inches tall. So they're all made to life size. Oh, that sounds mm-hmm. wonderful. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming you're going to have a cardinal. I do like the cardinals. Oh yes, <laughs> a, a male and a female. Yes. Oh, lovely. Oh. <laughs> so probably about forty birds already um, are in the works this winter. And again, it's a great time for for this kind of a project because so many artists are stuck at home and they're you know. In, in their studios and and you know they're very excited to be a part of the feather project so when they yeah. finish it do they ship it to you and then you will then mm-hmm. install it on yeah. the on the yes the we're gonna project? have a we're gonna we're gonna have an installation um bird party in the spring probably late april early may uh we can't use mortar below 50 degrees at course, night so yes. that's our that's our our cutoff time so yeah april may we're gonna get started again wow mm-hmm. that sounds very cool i'm gonna be waiting anticipation on Facebook to see these installations. <laughs> that sounds great. Rachel, we are out of time. It's, it's gone so quick. Okay. It's been wonderful chatting to you. Just quickly, tell us again your, your website and where we can find you for more information. Yes, www.sagermosaics.com and be sure to click the button to sign up for the newsletter and that will that will make sure that you get my blogs. I'm not, a, I, maybe once a month or so. Um, it's not, it won't be overwhelming uh so sagermosaics.com yeah oh and okay. instagram instagram is uh, that's probably my my main uh social networking um format and that is sager mosaics okay at, Sa- at sager mosaics mm-hmm. so sager mosaics uh, instagram but you're also on facebook too because that's where i find you too and then that's the same sager it's mosaics. the same thing yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. Well, um, Happy New Year once again, and I hope 2021 is a great year. Sounds like you've got a lot of wonderful things happening. Um, Keep well and keep safe. Thank you. It was my pleasure speaking to you. I I, um, look forward to your next visit. Thank you to our guests, Rachel Sager of Sager Mosaics and The Ruins Project, located in Winsett, Pennsylvania. You have been listening to the January edition of Laurel Highlands Happenings. All events and businesses mentioned today can be found at golaurelhighlands.com. And if you're active on social media, do follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. At LHTC Broadband, we're proud to provide the communication services you need to get the most from today's technology. We're your local choice for TV, phone, and internet. We offer high-quality cable TV service with HD, multi-room DVR, on-demand, and watch TV everywhere, plus unlimited calling. And our internet is faster than ever with speeds up to one gigabyte. With no contracts and local customer service, switching has never been easier. Call today, 724-593-2411, or visit lhtcbroadband.com.